Good afternoon, Southwest Florida. I'm Bree Walling. This Naples Herald lunch break is sponsored by our friends at the Salokia of Cape Coral. This afternoon, we'll tell you about Governor Scott still pleading for federal relief funds, Trump giving the go-ahead for expanded offshore drilling, and more. Today is Friday, January 5th, and this is the lunch break. Governor Scott continues to make appeals to leaders in Washington to get Florida federal relief funding after an active and devastating hurricane season. A disaster funding bill which includes funds for Texas after August Hurricane Harvey, wildfires on the nation's west coast, and funding for Florida, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico after September's hurricanes Irma and Maria was passed by the House on December 21st. The $81 billion measure was split off from discussions on a continuing resolution to keep the government funded through mid-January. Now the Senate it still must pass the measure and Scott is urging the Senate to act. One of the key measures in the December funding package passed by the House included aid for Florida citrus farmers who got no such aid in the first two disaster relief bills from Congress. The bill also includes $12 billion in funding for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers where at least some of the funds would go toward the Herbert Hoover Dyke surrounding Lake Okeechobee. And the state is also seeking reimbursements for the costs associated with taking in Puerto Rican refugees from Hurricane Maria. But some are concerned that with the funding measure no longer attached to the continuing resolution that kept the government open, the Senate may never get to it. Read more online. The Trump administration on Thursday moved to vastly expand offshore drilling from the Atlantic to the Arctic Oceans with a plan that would open up federal waters off California for the first time in more than three decades. The new five-year drilling plan also could open new areas of oil and gas exploration in areas off the East Coast from Georgia to Maine, where drilling has been blocked for decades. Many lawmakers in those states are supporting offshore drilling, though the Democratic governors of North Carolina and Virginia oppose drilling off their coast. Governor Scott, a Republican, Republican also opposes offshore drilling near Florida, as do the three Democratic governors on the West Coast. Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke announced the plan Thursday, saying that responsible development of offshore energy resources would boost jobs and economic security while providing billions of dollars to fund conservation along U.S. coastlines. While a coalition of more than 60 environmental groups denounced the plan, saying it would impose severe and unacceptable harm to America's oceans, coastal economies, public health, and marine life. The proposal comes less than a week after the Trump administration proposed to rewrite or kill rules on offshore oil and gas drilling imposed after the 2010 rig explosion in the Gulf of Mexico. The accident on BP's Deepwater Horizon rig killed 11 workers and triggered the biggest offshore oil spill in U.S. history. Two studies show that global warming is making the world's oceans sicker, depleting them of oxygen and harming delicate coral reefs more often. The drop in oxygen levels is getting worse, choking large areas and is more of a complex problem than previously thought. A second study finds that severe bleaching caused by warmer waters is hitting once colorful coral reefs four times more often than it used to a few decades ago. Both studies are in Thursday's edition of the journal Science. Researchers have seen coastal dead zones from fertilizer pollution from farms before, as well as areas of low oxygen in open ocean blamed on warmer waters, but this study shows how the two problems are interconnected with common causes and potential solutions. In a separate study, a team of experts looked at 100 coral reefs around the globe and how often they have had severe bleaching since 1980. In the early 80s, bleaching episodes would happen at a rate of once every 25 to 30 years. As of 2016, they are now happening just under once every six years. Guam has been one of the hardest places hit with eight severe bleaching outbreaks since 1994, four of them in the last five years. The Florida Keys, Puerto Rico, and Cuba have been hit seven times. And that was a lunch break for today. I'm Bree Walling. For your twice daily news fix, head over to the Naples Herald YouTube channel and subscribe. Leave us a comment to let us know your thoughts on the news or what you would like to hear about. The lunch break airs Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. And don't forget to check out our morning report that also airs Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend.